there. Welcome to tonight's episode of Philosophical Thoughts with me, your host, Phyllis James. We've got a great show for you tonight. First up, Francis Bacon is here all the way from London, England. Let's give Francis a warm welcome. Francis. Next up, we've got uh, a wonderful philosophical mind here. Let's give a warm welcome to Helene Suzuki. And last but not least, we've got Jack Derrida. So how are you all feeling tonight? Very good, thank you. Yes, very well. Well, Phyllis, I'd say that's a pretty illogical question, considering our feelings can't actually be measured by our senses, therefore aren't real. Uh, okay. So, Helen, Jack, I understand you know each other? Oh, yes. We go way back. Yes. We grew up in Algeria together uh, when the French ruled. Yes, however, it was quite a hard life. We went through similar hardships because we were both Jews, and therefore we were not truly accepted in yes. society. Yes. We had trouble finding our identity since um, we grew up during the Holocaust. Although we didn't live in Europe, we weren't entirely affected, but there were still, uh, it was still a very touchy, or there were racists, let's say. Indeed. And, yes, and so having the identity of being Jewish, but having to conceal that, and also being French, but not actually being French because we didn't grow up in France. Mm -hmm. um, so we would conceal um, our religion in ways where we wouldn't call our birthday parties or our parties a bar mitzvah, we would call them a communion. And we wouldn't say circumcision, but the Christian word for that. So, yes, it was just very hard concealing our lives as French Jews, but yes. we found each other. Well, as I sit here with three great philosophical minds, I think some hard-hitting questions are in order. Francis, let's start with you. You famously came up with the four idols of mind, all of which are human tendencies that prevent the mind from truly being able to understand and um, understand things. That's correct. On that note, do you believe that there are some things that humans can never truly know? Absolutely, Phyllis. There are an abundance of things humans can never know for certain. Anything in the entire world that we cannot uh, prove through our sensory experiences cannot be known for sure. In addition to this, things that cannot be proven through the scientific method, which I was a father of, um, can never be known for sure through hypothesis, um, predictions, analysis of data, and the conclusion. If we are unable to reach an absolute and definite conclusion through the use of our senses and how we experience these things, we can never be know them to be true. I would agree that anything that cannot be proven through logic or by, by reason is inaccurate by default. However, I would argue that sensory experiences are not the only method of being able to tell if something is true or not. I respectfully disagree. Okay. Helen, yourself? Well, uh, based on uh, the deconstructive theory coined by my good and longtime oh. friend, Jacques, <laughs> <laughs> Um, I believe that um, indeterminate knowledge is consisted of facts that aren't necessarily true and facts that also contradict themselves. Also, in the book that I wrote in 1975 with my good friend Catherine Clément called The Newly Born Woman. Good read, yes. Yes, such a good one. Uh, <laughs> favorite one in the book. Um, we discuss and wrote lots about feminism, knowledge, phallogocentric theories, and one of the main uh, theories that I have um, <clears throat> and discuss a lot in the book is that everything is based on gender and sex and sexuality. So for example, the question was, are there things humans can never know? Um, a man will never know what it's like to be a woman. 
and <laughs> vice versa. A woman will never know what it's like to be a man. So if you apply the theory, uh, or if you apply uh, gender to every question or uh, theory, then there you have it. I like that. And Jack, what do you think? Well, Phyllis, what does it even mean to truly know something? One might think it means to understand a certain concept to the best of their own knowledge. However, another might think that it means to understand a certain concept to the best of a professional's knowledge or a encyclopedia's. It's just such an ambiguous way in which we communicate using in the English language. There could be 30 people in a room and they hear one word and they each understand and interpret it completely differently. Say, for example, if I were to have grown up with an abusive father and Helen were to have grown up with a nice and supportive father, I would have completely different thoughts and emotions that arise from the word. Mine most likely would be negative and Helen's would most likely be positive. Therefore, it's very impossible for us to truly understand the way in which we intend for our words to be interpreted. Well said, Jacques. Thank you, Helen. And Francis, I understand you've been dead for many centuries. That's true. It's true, yes. Um, what's pneumonia. your opinion? Oh. <laughs> pneumonia. It's a killer. Guess you know. What is your opinion on the new technology? Well, I find it quite troubling. You see, I downloaded this new app recently. Uh, I believe it's called Tinder. Oh, oh yes. yes. The and Tinder. The Tinder. Yeah. <laughs> and you see, on this app, you have access to conversations with people. However, how can you truly know the person you're talking to is the person they claim to be? I have no way of seeing this person. I can't hear them speak. It's so it's only through these text boxes, and um, it's quite troubling to me. You see, there's an entire show dedicated to this. It's called uh, Something Fish. Catfish. 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 My favorite. And there are so many people who claim to be someone and then are someone completely different, which ties back to my entire theory of if I can't experience this person through my senses, how do I know they're real? Illogical, am I right? Alright, on to my next question. I'll be being very uh, smart individuals. Do you think that human knowledge is based entirely on sensory experience? Helen. Sensory perception is not based on knowledge whatsoever, Phyllis. It is more based on religion, class, society, race, and most importantly, gender. Our knowledge is political and is also based on our past experiences. As we are born with all the thing, things that I mentioned previously, um, it also adds on to uh, past experiences, which also help perceive the world as humans. Example, as Jacques mentioned previously, if he was raised by an abusive father and I wasn't, we would have very different perceptions of the world. And to tie in race and sexuality and gender, a black woman would perceive the world very differently than a white man. So, no. Sensory perception is not based on our knowledge, but by our experiences. And Jack, what's your opinion on this? Uh, how naive little Phyllis. What even is knowledge? What does it truly just, mean? Just answer the question, please. Well, if I must, the way that we gain and acquire knowledge is by receiving it from some form of communication using language. Whether it be reading, watching, listening, experiencing, it's all communicating in some sort of sensory way. And once having gained this knowledge from the sensory perception, it's internalized differently by each human being based on the specific uh, language and way of communicating used. Therefore, if you deconstruct it, <laughs> I see what you did there. Oh, Jacques. Human knowledge is based on sensory perception, but each person's knowledge is slightly different 
because we all understand the language differently. As you can tell, I'm not a huge fan of language. It's fairly limiting. I could see that, yes. Yes, I would agree with both of your opinions. Uh, I think that we are both, we are all born with innate knowledge based on our circumstance. I strongly disagree with that, actually. Um, as an empiricist, I believe that we are all born as blank slates. I strongly disagree with the fact that you've of all stated we have some kind of knowledge that we are born into based on, as you said, uh, I believe, gender, race, and things like that. Um, we are all born the same. However, through our sensory experiences, and only through our sensory experiences, we shape the reality we live in and come to conclusions about our reality through those sensory experiences. I believe not. Oh, you, really? You say that um, our experiences are uh, based on our decisions, as would you say oppression is created by our minds and we oppress ourselves? Well, Helen, can you experience oppression through your senses? Who's to say oppression is real? It's, it's real. It's I would say growing up as a Jewish woman, oppression is very much real and I, you are a white man. Okay, let's move on. Okay, well, uh, I think we've all stated our opinions in a very um, professional manner. So I think that's all the time we have for today on our show. If you think about it, put okay. the question <laughs> in I think. All right, this has been Philosophical Thoughts with me, your host, Phyllis James. That is all the time.